Hi, ladies and dudes, this is Rebecca Lynn Barkley, a.k.a. Boobop1987. This is my review for a day. And today's review, ladies and dudes, well, my friends, we are finally here at movie review number 50. And I can't believe we made this far to get to this movie review. Out of all the 49 movie reviews that I did so far, from Taken to um the third movie that came from the live action version of Roni Kenshin. We finally made it to movie review number 50. It's way too hard to explain, but this is going to be a big giant celebration that we will never forget in movie history, even for me, of course. So here it is, ladies and dudes. Why I got in this movie ticket. My 50th movie review is Run All Night. And it features our favorite main man in the whole wide world, the old great and mighty Liam Neeson. And once again, Liam Neeson did another good film. But yet, it's becoming his next underrated movie, if you know what I mean. So I guess you could say Liam Neeson is the king of good movies that is so darn underrated. So anyway, without further ado, ladies and dudes, here is my 50th movie review is Run All Night. And it starts right now. So to tell you the truth is, ladies and dudes, I have nothing, I have nothing to say about this plot of the movie. I think it's kind of simple and easy. I will say for this movie, it is more like a tragic father and son relationship story. A story between a father and a son. It's a story about these two guys named Jimmy, played by Liam Neeson of course, and the other is a, a dude named Michael, played by this guy who was the Robocop. Uh, they had a really hard time together as father and son. They don't know each other very well. They live in their separate lives and their separate stories. Uh, Jimmy is uh, one of the members of the mob group, you know, doing bad stuff, killing people and getting involved in drugs and all that stuff, while Michael is a guy who wants to take care of his family at all costs. Try to protect them from danger and all that stuff. Until um, this one big giant night happened where uh, Jimmy came to Michael's house and there was a mysterious killer on the loose who has a gun and Jimmy had no choice but to get back in and he killed that guy by force. And that guy that uh, Jimmy killed is... Some son from the leader of the mob group. And Jimmy had no choice but to tell his friend the truth about what happened. And that leader of the mob crew got upset about it. And this guy had no choice but to tell his men to go after Jimmy and Michael to, to try to take them down to the count and, and go after their family next. So, there's only a couple of questions remaining in this movie. Will ever Jimmy and Michael survive this whole mess in time in somewhere around New York City? Will ever those mob people will go after them and start taking them down to the count? Or what's going to happen to Jimmy and Michael's family? Will they survive this whole mess or not? So anyway, that's my whole entire plot of the movie called Run All Night. And to tell you the truth, this ladies and dudes, something that all of you have been waiting for is, what the heck do I think about this movie? To tell you the truth, this ladies and dudes, I really do love this movie. It is a really darn good movie. Out of all these Liam Neeson films that I've seen here and there, from the Taken Saga, The Grey, The Unknown, Nonstop, The Lego Movie, and so much more, I will say Run All Night is one of the most tragic stories that I ever watched in my whole entire life. It is a really sad story. It's 
a story about a tragic relationship between a father and the son, and they only knew each other for a short period of time, and that's a really sad shame. I will say the storyline is pretty good. It has they have likable characters. It has really good action scenes, great drama, great score. And this is a really good radar film. Check out this movie right now if you guys have or haven't seen this movie. And since everybody enjoyed Cinderella, but I'm not interested in the Cinderella movie that much. But I'd rather see a Liam Neeson film instead. So anyway, ladies and dudes, let's head on to the strongest points and the weakest points of Broad All Night. I will say for the strongest points for this movie is truly the action scenes. I love all the action scenes that happen in this movie. There's only three good action scenes that are the most enjoyable part of the movie. Uh, there was one action scene that I liked where it took place in the in somebody's bathroom. I think it's the male bathroom, I think. There was a part where Jimmy was fighting one of the mob dudes and he tried really hard to take that guy down to the count and Jimmy got beat up by that guy pretty badly and it was pretty darn cool to see uh, Jimmy fighting somebody in the bathroom. The second good action scene in the whole entire movie is uh, uh, where Jimmy has to face this dude, played by that common guy, uh... There was a fight scene going on that took place in one of the apartment's hotels, and one of them got caught on fire, and... Yeah, Jimmy got beat up by that guy pretty badly, and... I think he has some cuts and bruises somewhere, I think he got shots around his shoulder? Or stabbed? I can't remember, but but I did see the movie. So yeah, um, that's a second good action scene I love about this movie. But my most favorite action scene in the whole entire movie is definitely the car chase scene. The car chase scene is definitely one of the best parts about this movie. It was very strong, very fast paced. It could be a little shaky here or there, but it was very, very still. I love the part where Jimmy was chasing after those cops and he's trying to save his son's life from making a very big giant mistake that he will ever regret. I mean, I love the action scenes. It, it was so darn well done, very well fast paced. And I will say of all the Liam Neeson films that's kind of non-taken wise, I will say that Ron All Night is one of the best action seen movies ever that is truly not taken wise if you know what I mean. So anyway, the action scenes are the strongest points for the movie. And as for the weakest points for the movie is, I got a tie. Just a tie between, I will say there's a little bit of slowness here and there in the movie. And once again, I don't like the part where Liam Neeson smokes cigarettes. That's a bad thing. I will say for the slowness that there's a little bit parts here and there, somewhere around like dab in the near middle of the beginning of the film, I think. I can't remember. But yeah, it's a little bit slow. Once the slowness will stop, it'll go back to its fast pace. And the second main weak point in the movie is seeing Liam Neeson smoking cigarettes again. I really don't like that part at all. They should get rid of that part for good. And just let Liam Neeson uh, use a toothpick in a movie. And since I did have a major problem with Liam Neeson smoking a cigarette back at non-stop, and there's only three scenes of the, for the film, but yeah, they decided to bring that part back again. And I really don't like that part at all. So please get rid of the cigarette part. Please, I beg of you. I don't want to see Liam Neeson smoking cigarettes no more in a film. For once, just give Liam Neeson a frickin' toothpick for goodness sakes. I just love Liam Neeson using a toothpick way better than a cigarette. If you know what I mean. And now, ladies and dudes, let's go on to the characters of the movie. And I will go with the three best characters 
that I ever seen in this movie. Let's go on with the villain first. Uh, the Sean dude, played by this Ed... Ed Harris, if I remember right? Ed Harris? I really do like Ed Harris's character. Uh, he did a pretty good job playing a main villain for this movie. I really like his personality, attitude, he's a very serious character. He took things very seriously as the main boss of the mob group. And I really do like a couple of scenes here or there where he had a really strong connection with Liam Neeson's character. Even at the restaurant scene, I will say the restaurant scene is a very well shot scene for the movie. I really do like the part where they had a little heart to heart talk or maybe like a cold heart talk or whatever that is. But yeah, that was a pretty good scene overall. And Ed Harris, I give you a thumbs up for your performance, man. Well, two thumbs up. Here you go. And then we got uh, this Michael guy. Yeah, he's known as the dude who plays the RoboCop. I haven't seen the RoboCop movie. I'm not sure if I want to review that movie or not. But yeah, I really do like that guy's performance as Michael. I really like his personality, his attitude, he's a really tough cookie, and I know he doesn't like his father very much, but you know later on in the movie he turned out to be a softy. I do like the part where he does care about his family a lot, and I give this guy two thumbs up for, you know, caring about his family a lot. So I give this guy a big giant thumbs up. And now we can go on to the the most biggest main character of the movie is Jimmy Collin, played by our favorite man in the whole wide world, the old great and my Liam Neeson. I will say this is Liam Neeson's next greatest performance. I really love this character. I mean, this guy has a really good storyline, he has a great personality, great attitude, He's such a really cool bad A word character, and he took his job very, very seriously. And the best part I love about Jimmy is the part where he did kill that guy who is uh, the son of the, the mob leader. I really like the part where he did tell his friend the truth about what happened. And I, I really want to give Jimmy a whole lot of points. For telling his best friend the truth about what happened about killing his son by accident and he just tell him that that guy was trying to kill his son and all that stuff so I will say that Jimmy is a very truthful character he did tell his friend the truth all the way through in this movie but I didn't know he killed another person and that was around later on in the film I will say that Jimmy is one of the most tragic characters that Liam Neeson have ever played, and I really do appreciate the old gray and my Liam Neeson for playing so many cool tragic characters from all the movies that he did from here and there. There is only a few tragic and regrettable characters I can remember that he played for so many years, like Fujimoto, uh, Matthew Scudder, uh, Michael Collins, Jean Blanc, Jean, Bill Marx. Think of some of these characters that Liam Neeson play who are pretty darn tragic, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I will say, Jimmy, welcome to the Liam Neeson family for all the bad word news that Liam Neeson have ever played or something like that. Hard for me to say. Okay, ladies and dudes, here's the most important moment that everybody has been waiting for. Here's my final thought of Ron All Night. Overall, Ron All Night is one of the best movies that Liam Neeson made so far, but yet, this is a very tragic one. It had a really good story, a very good storyline. The characters are likable, uh, has some good action scenes, great drama, great score. And this is one of the most tragic movies that you'll never forget in movie history. So for my rating for 1 to 10, I decided to give Run All Night a really good score of 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Please check out this movie to believe it. If you haven't, Jimmy's going to hunt you down and take you down for the count. For real, if you know what I mean.
Here's to all 50 movie reviews that I did so far. And be prepared for my next 50, 50 more movie reviews to come in the later on future. So anyway, that's my whole entire movie review of N Run All Night. I hope you enjoyed this movie review. And please tell me, ladies and dudes, what is your most favorite Liam Neeson movie review that I did so far from Taken 1 to Taken 3? Whichever it is, leave a comment there. Let me know. And join me next time on my next movie reviews to come. Please don't let it be third person. No, not third person. Get that movie away from me. So I'll see you all later. Sayonara.